Okay, so species difference have been observed in both phase one and phase two reaction. In phase one reaction, both qualitative and quantitative variation in the enzymes uh, level have been observed. Qu qualitative difference among species it generally result from the presence or absence of specific enzyme in those species. So the quantitative difference results from variation in the amount and localization of the enzyme, the amount of natural inhibitors, and the competition of enzymes for the specific substrate. Similarly, if you take in men, amphetamine and ephedrine, they are predominantly metabolized by oxidative deamination, whereas in rats, aromatic oxidation is the major route in phase two reaction. Similarly, in pigs, phenol is excreted mainly as glucuronide, whereas its sulfate conjugate dominates in cats. The strain difference, just as the difference in drug metabolizing ability between different species, the difference is observed between strains of the spa same species also. It can be studied under two headings. One is pharmacogenetics. So pharmacogenetics is the study of the intersubject variability in drug uh, response. It's called as pharmacogenetics. In identical twins, uh, uh, very little or no difference in metabolism is being observed in the drugs like halothane, phenylbutazone, uh, antipyrin, etc. Whereas uh, uh, the difference is seen in fraternal twins. Then ethnic variation. So the difference is observed in the metabolism of drug among the different races. That is called as ethnic variation. So this variation, it can be either monomorphic or it can be polymorphic. So for example, uh, the rate of metabolism in the different uh, uh, ethnic groups will be different. So if you take uh, certain, the certain people, they are called as slow acetylators and rapid acetylators. So um, uh, that is depending upon the ethnic group, there may be uh, the rapid and slow acetylators. So in uh, rapid acetylators, the level of the enzyme n acetyl transferase will be high. And so because of that, these particular drugs will be, uh, the acetylation process will be rapid in the rapid acetylators. So for example, you can see here the difference, species and strain differences, amphetamine, in humans, rabbits, guinea pigs and all, they undergo oxidative deamination is the metabolic pathway. Whereas in rats, they undergo aromatic hydroxylation. Whereas in cats, uh, the glucuronate conjugation pathway is very less. Uh, whereas sulf sul uh, sulfate conjugation is the major preferred pathway. Whereas in pigs, if you take, in in uh, pigs, the uh, sulfate conjugation is very limited, but, uh, and even the glucuronide conjugation is also limited. So, uh, based upon the different species, okay. So, when you take in species itself, there is variation in the metabolic pathway. Say so, the same drug, amphetamine, in humans, rabbits, and guinea pigs, oxidative deamination is the pathway for amphetamine. Whereas in rats, amphetamine, this particular drug, it undergoes aromatic hydroxylation. So similarly, uh, even in animals, different uh, uh, species, they will be showing different uh, uh, variation in the pathway, metabolic pathways. Similarly, if you take in the strains also, there will be variation in the metabolic pathways. So the drugs behave differently in different individuals due to the genetic variation. So, for example, if you take succinylcholine, it is a skeletal muscle relaxant. It is being metabolized by pseudocholine esterase. So, in some uh, group of people, they lack this enzyme. So, because of that, the metabolism of succinylcholine uh, will not take place in certain groups. So, in such people, when you are administering the succinylcholine, it leads to apnea. Similarly, um, the uh, isoniacid, the drug isoniacid in fast acetylators uh, as well as slow acetylators are there. In fast acetylators, 
the metabolism of isoniazid will be very fast uh, whereas in slow acetylators the rate of metabolism will be less okay uh, so uh, this is mainly due to the variation in the levels of n acetyl transferase enzyme next is the altered physiological factors one is pregnancy so uh, pregnancy it will affect the hepatic drug metabolism uh so what happens is uh in the <clears throat> during the pregnancy stage there will be elevated concentration of various hormones such as estrogens progesterone then placental growth hormones and prolactin so because of that there will be variation in the metabolic pattern in the pregnant women so for example if you take the metabolism of promazine and pethidine it will be reduced during the pregnancy period okay uh, in uh, similarly in even if you take in uh, uh, rats and all the hexobarbital biotransformation it indicated unchanged or significantly elevated microsomal activity when you compare with that of normal rats so there there will be variation in the metabolic pattern in the pregnant women that is mainly because of the variation in the hormonal levels similarly disease state so based upon disease state also they can it can affect the metabolism there are many disease state that will affect the metabolism of drugs some of uh, these are cirrhosis of the liver alcoholic liver disease cholestatic jaundice diabetes mellitus acromegaly then malaria then various infections by bacteria or virus uh, then so it see the major effects are seen in the diseases which affects the liver uh, that is quantitative they because liver is a major site of drug metabolism so uh, what will happen is when uh, liver is affected there will be decreased enzyme activity in the liver and uh, the uh, blood flow to the liver also will be affected then hypoalbuminemia which will lead to low plasma binding of drugs for example if you take uh, glycine conjugation of salicylate oxidation of vitamin d hydrolysis of procaine uh, these are all impaired in kidney diseases so depending upon the disease state if it if, if the liver kidney or the major organs if they are affected in that case the metabolism of the drugs also will be altered so these are all some of the diseases where the uh, variation in the metabolism will be seen seen uh, liver diseases like hepatitis uh, cirrhosis cancer hemochromatosis fatty liver these all can impair the activity of the cytochrome p450 enzyme similarly cardiac diseases that can also uh, uh, slow the blood flow to the liver and thereby there will be decrease in the metabolism the thyroid disease like hypothyroidism or hyperthyroidism so in hyperthyroidism there will be increased levels of thyroid hormone so in that case the metabolic rate will be increased uh, whereas uh, in hypothyroidism where there is le le uh, lower in the levels of the thyroid hormones there will be decrease in the drug metabolism then there are also certain external factors like disease conditions already we have discussed this the nutrition and diet uh, that is the ratio of the um, diet like high proteins and poor carbohydrate it will enhance the metabolism then starvation it will inhibit the microsomal enzymes then drug drug interaction like enzyme inducers these are all some of the example rifampicin and anti, the anti convulsant drugs these are all enzyme inducers Whereas uh, uh, valproate, uh, cimetidine, erythromycin, these are all enzyme inhibitors. Then the stereochemical aspects: uh, two enantiomers of a chiral drug commonly possess different pharmacological properties. The numerous studies have so shown that the individual enantiomer of a chiral drug often display stereoselectivity in pharmacokinetics. toxicity and in the area of drug metabolism so for example if you take the drug dextropropoxyphene so dextro and the levo form is therefore the drug propoxyphene these are the enantiomers so the dextropropoxyphene is an analgesic drug whereas the levo form it has antitussive properties so there will be variation in the uh, properties among the enantiomers similarly 
this minus enantiomer of warfarin is five times more potent oral anticoagulant than its R plus enantiomer. So if you see the metabolic rate among the enantiomers, so the different metabolites, uh, sorry, uh, the, the different enantiomers, they show variation in the metabolic pathways. So this is one of the example pentobarbital. You can see here, it can either undergo omega, omega one oxidation or it can undergo omega oxidation. So in the different, uh, so here you can see this is the uh, hydroxylation which is taking place. Omega omega one. So in the second carbon, the oxidation is taking place. Whereas in omega oxidation in the first carbon, the methyl group, the oxidation is uh, taking place. Hydroxylation is taking place. Okay, so this is the case of pentobarbital. So the different uh, either omega one oxidation or omega two oxidation, and thereby the different metabolites. Similarly, if you take glutithiamide, this particular glutithiamide it can exist exist as the dextro or the levo enantiomer. So the the dextro enantiomer it will undergo hydroxylation. Both undergoes oxidation, whereas in dextro enantiomer the hydroxylation it takes place in this fourth position. So thereby it will form four hydroxy glutithiamide. Whereas when you take the levo enantiomer of glutithiamide, it will undergo metabolism at the second position substituent. So this uh, CH2CH3 is an ethyl group. So in this ethyl group, the hydroxylation is taking place. So you can see here there is variation in the drug metabolism in the different enantiomers. Then next is hormonal imbalance. So the higher level of one hormone, it may inhibit the activity of few enzymes uh, while inducing that of others. For example, in adrenoelectomy or thyroidectomy. So in uh, thyroidectomy, you know, the thyroid gland will be removed. So there will be variation in the levels of the enzyme. And alloxin induced diabetes in animals, they all show variation in the enzyme activity. Okay, and thereby the rate of metabolism also will be varied. Uh, similarly, you can see even in the pituitary growth hormone and stress uh, related changes in ACTH level, it will all affect the rate of metabolism. Then there are also certain environmental factors. One is aromatic hydrocarbon which is present in cigarette smoke. Okay, the polyhydroxy aromatic hydrocarbon, which is present in cigarette smoke. So this uh, cigarette smoke, uh, this polyhydroxy, uh, um, uh, hydro polyaromatic hydrocarbons, they act as enzyme inducers. So because of that, if you take the rate of metabolism, it will be fast in smokers than in non-smokers. Then similarly, chronic alcoholism, it might, lead to enzyme induction as well then pesticides or organophosphate insecticides these all they can act as enzyme inducers then similarly based upon the climate variation hot and humid climate biotransformation <coughs> is decreased and vice versa then similarly at high altitude decreased biotransformation occurs because of the uh, decrease in the levels of oxygen and thereby to lead to decrease in the levels of oxidative biotransformation. Then these are all some of the um, food in, uh, ingredients or vegetables and fruits which can act as inducers or inhibitors. So for example, if you take allergic acid, uh, it will induce phase two while decreasing phase one. It is mainly found in raspberries, strawberries, cranberries, walnuts, pomegranate, etc. So all this consists of the silagic acid, which will uh, <coughs> induce phase two, whereas it will decrease the phase one reaction. Similarly, uh, D-limonin, it is a strong inducer of both phase one and phase two. It is mainly found in caraway, dill, uh, dill seeds and citrus, peel and uh, juice of citrus fruits, etc. Similarly, brassica vegetables, uh, they stimulate both phase one and phase two which is found in broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage. This is mainly the indole alkaloids, indole containing alkaloids. So indoles, which is found in these vegetables, it can also stimulate the phase one and phase two reactions. So these are all some of the uh, um, compounds which can either induce or influence. Now comes the physical chemical properties of a drug. The molecular size and shape 
the pk values acidity or viscidity the lipophilicity and the steric and electronic characteristics of the drug it all it will influence the interaction of the drug with the specific enzyme site uh, and thereby it can influence the metabolism okay so uh, the therapeutic efficacy the toxicity and the biological half life of a drug it mainly depends on the metabolism of a drug and the number of factors which will affect the metabolism hence there are the various factors affecting the uh, drug metabolism they should be considered while administering and in uh, determining the proper dosage to the patients okay so because of this metabolism is a major parameter which will influence the which will influence the bio uh, bi uh, biological activity of the drug molecule 